Just know you got something from here. Of course, you know, you got to. If your prison guard sucks if you don't have a good clinch and you don't know how to either get to the back or swim move um, from homie control, well then you might want to work on it, but just let it go and go for half guard or just disengage all the dead. All right, so I'm gonna pull them on top of me, push the butterflies through, homie control. Foot on the hip is huge, squeezing this tight. He's holding onto my head. Let him suck that elbow in. High guard. If I can't control his posture, <clears throat> the purpose of the pump here, the pump, so I can't get his hands to the mat, now I gotta start pushing his elbows in. His elbows, I'm trying to push his elbows in so I can attack that arm. Lock his shoulder and attack the arm. I can't lock his shoulder with his elbow out. His elbow's here, and now I lock the shoulder. So, once we're here, and he, he gains posture, we weren't able to control his posture, as he postures up, I'm gonna lock his shoulder. And then, go down the path of the, the toss. We end up here north. Some guys, you can't control the posture, and they're posturing up. You go right up and lock their shoulder whole different path now. It's like we're just coming off of a pump that worked. Does that make sense? Yeah. You gotta catch that really quick though. You can't, you gotta be waiting for it. You gotta know in a split second that your posture control is not working. All right? Double on your hooks, butterfly, gets you to full guard. Gets you to homie control, shut that arm over your head, let's swim. Don't forget about the high guard to keep that posture controlled. All right, let's go. Hey, 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 eat your breakfast every day. My name is Mike Lawson. I was a uh, corpsman, a Navy corpsman in the uh, Navy. I was attached to the Marine Corps. I started at 1st Battalion, 11th Marines, went to SEAL school and didn't make it through. Went through basic reconnaissance course. I was a squared away sailor, four OE valves. I, I did pretty good. You know, I had a good career. I did 12 years. Uh, never really smoked weed or anything. I got a traumatic brain injury, like a lot of other military. Um, Let me see your, your uh, Yeah, here's my card. That's service connected, so everybody knows while well, on active duty, you know, I got proof that's 100%. Uh, you know, man, I... So I, what happened? You never smoked weed yeah, your I never, whole life? I, yeah, I didn't... You're a right-wing Republican military guy? I was pretty Republican, yeah, you know. And what uh, you, you thought potheads <laughs> were idiots, right? Well, I just thought it was like a waste of athletic talent. I thought you couldn't be an athlete and smoke weed. That's, okay. That, you know, and I thought... Everybody smoked weed was dumb. So what did you do in the military exactly? I was a Navy corpsman. Uh, that's like a medic. Uh, I, you know, I, I went through field medical service school, through, through regular corpsman school. Uh, so I helped people. Uh, um, I boxed for the, uh, the Camp Pendleton Marine Corps team under Coach Pineapple um, four separate times. Uh, I had a lot of amateur fights. They, they didn't know if it was that or we did some explosions one time on San Clemente Island. You should probably bleep out San Clemente Island. We did some explosions, and uh, and uh, maybe it was there. I don't know. Um, I was knocked unconscious once in, a, in an exhibition match on the USS Fisher between a Thai boxer and myself. So so I don't know. You know, I don't know for sure what happened to me. I know that when they did my uh, my my brain thing, the MRI thing, or whatever you call it, the image dude, that uh, this is dead right here. And so uh, at first they told me well, I was dead. Part of your brain is dead. Yeah, part of my brain. And how did that happen again? From it was what? either from the impact of punches or from the impact of an explosion. They don't know. They're not sure, but yeah. it happened in the Navy somehow. Yeah, it happened. It's service connected. Um, and so anyway, man, I started having like these blackouts and they told me I was depressed. I said, I don't really feel depressed, man, you know. They fucking drugged me up, gave me a bunch of shit. Uh, they come to find out they're seizures, the blackouts are seizures. Um, and right. you're still in the military at this point? No, no, I'm out. You're I'm out of the military? I'm disabled. From the military, so yeah, I, I uh, so I can't work because I have seizures and I forget shit. Yeah, you know, forget. But what's going on. so did they let you go after you started getting these seizures, or you retired and then you got the seizures later? They let me go as soon as they found out. Right after they found out that I was having the seizures. 
Okay, so, okay. They let me go. They, they gave me a discharge. They gave me 70% in the beginning, but then they upped it to 100%. Uh, the reason they upped it, one of the reasons, I don't know, but I think one of the reasons they upped it is because I wasn't doing very well, man. I was throwing up a lot. So anyway, what happens is I'm end up in the hospital. Nothing's helping, dude. These guys are giving me carpamazepine. They're giving me all this fucking shit. They're shooting me full of fucking Finnegan. They're popping me with Zoloft when I'm depressed. I'm depressed because I'm throwing up all the fucking time. They start giving me something, uh, some stomach shit. They said I had acid reflux. And then they said it was my gallbladder, and they cut my gallbladder out. I'm throwing up this whole time. And, and finally, this nurse, she tells me, she said, listen, this is illegal, but you need to smoke weed. Honestly, I told on her to, to another, uh, another medical guy because i was in the medical profession man to me she was unprofessional and i was like listen you can't tell people to do that well it wasn't long after that that a, a neurologist said listen off the record you take your medicine or on the record you take your medicine off the record you need to start smoking some marijuana about that same time it's about three years ago i guess i started reading eddie's books because i was starting to i've done martial arts for 20 years but i was starting to enjoy the uh the jiu-jitsu thing man i was a traditional guy you know jiu-jitsu was so cool so so i'm reading his stuff and he's talking about the marijuana my wife's wife smoked weed you know uh my father-in-law smoked weed uh i guess i was a little maybe thought i was a little better than them you know <laughs> so so uh, i didn't really get into it and uh i read it and i thought fuck it man i'll give it a try now i'll tell you right now i'm supposed to take 600 milligrams of carpamazepine uh 200 milligrams TID three times a day uh, if I'm smoking weed I could take 200 milligrams QD or, or every day uh, if I'm not I got to take it three times that's what the episode now now that other drug they give me they give me this uh, shit, I probably said the name now I forgot Finnegan yeah this Finnegan tablets um, that shit man which like makes you sleep all the time so all you can get done is sleep and, and it's addictive and uh, the other one, carbamazepine, kills your, your liver. Anyway, that or your kidneys, one or the other. That uh, that Finnegan shit, you can't have a life on that shit, and, and you still throw up. Now, right now, man, I'll throw up if I grapple real hard. I'll throw up. If I get hit in the head, I'll puke immediately. But, but if I grapple real hard, I'll throw up. Uh, but that's it. If I'm not smoking weed, man, I'll throw up, and you can ask my wife. In fact, just you know, take the recording and ask without me even talking to her six times, eight times a day. I pull the fucking car over and puke. I tell the doctors, man. They tell me, oh, it's not the medicine. Wait well, a minute. You, you, he, <clears throat> you puke <laughs> how many times a day? Six or eight times a day. I Every day? All the time, yeah. How many times have you thrown up today? Well, today, I haven't thrown up since last night. That's if I don't smoke weed. I puke six or eight times. Oh, like, okay. I threw up last night, you know. Um, on weed, man, I probably throw up twice a week. You know what I mean? If I'm laughing, That's I'm beautiful. Exerting. Oh, so that's huge. So without For weed. For me, it is, man. Without, without weed. You throw up six times a day with weed two times a week. Yeah. yeah. That's fucking huge. And, and I mean, I've seen a bunch of doctors, dude. They cut my gallbladder out. Nothing's helped. I keep telling them I think I got to take the medicine. I got epilepsy. You can die from seizures. <laughs> you know, but you know what? The weed's helping with that. I don't have a doctor's permission. You know, I just, I hate taking all these fucking drugs, man. I go in there and they test my blood. They say my liver. They say this and that. I'm like, God damn, I, I, you know. I don't know why we're not legalizing this shit. So if you're watching this shit, you should legalize this shit because, uh, man, we got fucking morphine and oxycotton that's legal for a doctor to prescribe, and you can't prescribe marijuana. I don't. It's not fucking logical at this point. You know, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, so uh, if if you want to debate it, I'll debate you. Uh, you can come on Eddie's website, 10th Planet website. I'll fucking debate you. If you want to argue with me over whether you could smoke weed or not, then I, we can have a debate. I'll have a debate live. You know, I'm not a rich guy. I'm 100% disabled. You're going to do this shit around me. But if you want to argue, I don't care if you're a doctor, lawyer, preacher, teacher. I, I don't give a shit. I believe that marijuana should be at least medically legalized. If you don't want to give it to a bunch of kids, don't. If you don't want to make it legal for just anybody off the street, that's fine. But to have it not legal medically is fucking ridiculous. You're giving morphine to people. You're, you're giving kids this ADD shit and making them meth addicts, more or less. I mean, come on, man. So that's it. That's it. Now I'm starting that's to get a, mad. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a beautiful story. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. That's you a nice got story. me on my soapbox, man. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Medically, you can't clear me? Come on, man. <laughs> Free New York. Two, 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 now we're going to work on Free New York's. Guy in the guard's gonna get broken down. One hand on the mat, one hand on the chest. 
It's a real simple concept. It isn't break them down, two hands on the mat, and then you do that. It isn't break them down here and go, oh, I forgot to put one hand on the mat. One hand on the mat, switch it up. One hand on the chest. Real simple. And leave it on the mat for a second, then bring it back up. If you get it back up, then he has to zombie. Real simple. Full guard, he's gonna hold me up. Work on his posture, he's gonna hold me up. My ass is off the ground. I'm firmly around his head, squeezing him. Bring him down. Like New York, put your New York up a little bit. Clear the neck. Chill dog, come through, move. And then we're here, right? He's gonna always posture up. He's gonna be posturing, I'm gonna be battling. He's gonna work on the, the duck under. That's a great escape when you're caught in juke claw. Um, they're all good escapes. If the guy, if me, if I don't know how to handle his escapes, like if he rolls over his right shoulder and I'm not controlling his body, he's gonna roll over and get on top. It'll be like three times faster than that, but... Let's <laughs> pretend that you're fast. Huh? I didn't control him, he's on top, I can start all over again. That's a great escape. Also, if I'm not controlling his body, and I'm just here dicking around, he could just cartwheel over me. And then he's past my guard. That's worse. Or he can posture up and just limp arm. If I don't have good wrist control here, he pulls out. A lot of guys just don't want to give up anything. They don't want to roll or throw the guy. I just pull that arm and work for that. That works as well, too. Or he can do the duck under, which is, which is great if I don't react properly. Right now, I'm supposed to be applying constant pressure, constant leg curls down. I'm supposed to be tight in this position to control his posture. I'm not supposed to lose him. But if he throws me behind him I, and I'm tight, he's going to throw me and then roll up and get on top. Very common skin. So I have to train my instincts to not only go limp in midair, but spin the right way. There's only two ways you can spin towards the head and towards the legs. You want to spin towards the legs. Better control your inside control. If you spin towards the leg or the head, if you spin towards the head, and I'm here and I try to grab his head, he can roll up and we can square up or he can get my back or we just square up and we just start wrestling. We got to start, up, start over again. Well, that'll work too. You don't know, you don't know what's going to happen there. Or you could spin towards his legs. Go lift. He tries to throw me lift. Spin towards the legs. Now we're here. 